So, I have a lot of videos I want to do. I have um, a channel update I want to do. I have a new logo I want to release into the world. But I feel like I can't do any of that until I've done the last video on this axe. So, that's what we're doing today. So, I gotta get some paper towel. I just spilled tea all over the table, and by default, of course, I got tea on the axe. So, just let's do a little, little status update here. Remember, we did the handle, we did the wedge many, many times. It's not as perfect as I want it to be, but it's, it's going to be fine. It's good and solid. Polished up the head a lot. Look at me, I'm so beautiful. Um, and, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get it, yeah. See, there we go. So now, we just sharpen it up and we're good to go. If I was where I want to be with my skills, I'd be like, sharpen it up and make a sheath. But, um, I'm hoping that sometime, either in this calendar year or the beginning of the next one, I can, I can prompt. I'm gonna try that again. I'm hoping that sometime in this calendar year later on or maybe early in the next year I'll be able to try my hand at leather work so that I can start making my own sheets. But for now, that's just staying in the cards. So, one sip of tea. And we get to work. The way I sharpen my axes, I think I've mentioned before, is I do what, what I call a reverse rooster. The reason it's called a rooster is because it's the method that Craig Roost sort of has made popular. Um, if you don't know who Craig Roost is, he's sort of the head honcho of the Facebook Axe Junkies group. Um, he's got some videos up as well. Like, the Axe Junkies have a video channel, which I'm going to put right about there. Craig Roost is a fount of information on all things Axe related. And the way he does it is you take your sandpaper, you take your axe, you put it on your lap, and you use one of those painter's sandpaper holders to sharpen the edge in a circular motion. What I do is I take a mouse pad, I lay it on the table, and I put my paper on, my wet and dry sandpaper on the mouse pad, and I move the axe across it. I like to start with like a 600, then do an eight, a thousand, um, and then 2000, but today, I've already kind of got the beginnings of an edge on this axe because of when I was originally sanding it down to get some gloss on it. So I think that today I'm going to start straight at a thousand. And I'm going to try a hybrid of a reverse rooster and a rooster. What I'm going to do is use, see this, this mouse pad has a bit of a bubble on it. I'm going to use that to support the leading edge of the axe where the bit is. And I'm going to use this little sanding block here because I've got some small pieces of sandpaper and I'm going to see if I can make use of Craig Roost's um, technique as well. It's a very good technique. The results that everyone I know who uses it have gotten have made me weak in the knees. <laughs> over it. It's a little bombastic, but I still, it's a really nice, it's a really good uh, concept. So here I go. It's frustrating because this sandpaper isn't made specifically for this, so I kind of have to bend it. Oh, here's one that's already, here's one that's already bent up. Now what made, now what gave me the idea to use this hybrid system is I used this thing after my initial video where I glossed up the head one or two of you guys mentioned to use like sanding blocks to reduce the uh, <laughs> the impact and um, I found this one in the in the basement somewhere and I used that just to sort of keep glossing it up a little bit like just to touch up like there's virtually no difference I was just like I'd missed a spot here and there so 
and I like the um, I like the result. So I'm going to try this on the edge, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's just oh, let's just throw water all over the table, shall we? Nice, nice. Let's see what kind of day we're going to have here. Get some water on this. Get nice and wet. Should have just walked over to the sink and put it under the tab. But... Now, one thing I have to admit is that I no longer do my axes to shaving sharp. I find that, no, that's not entirely fair. I no longer do my axes that won't be used for carving to shaving sharp. I find that the robustness of a slightly, maybe slightly duller, but more uh, oblique angle is more important to me than being able to slice paper with my axe. Uh, I find that for an axe that's going to be a, a forest tool, I need it to be serviceable. When it's something that I'm going to use to carve a spoon, I need it to be really sharp. So this one, since it's not going to go into spoon carving duty, does not have to be hair splitting sharp. For knives, I'm quite fond of sharpening systems like that Lansky or that new Russian one that Wrangler Star has, where you get locked into a certain angle and uh, you use stones that are attached to a pivot point. I think for things like a Scandi knife or a kitchen knife, something like that is a very good concept. But for a for any kind of blade, I was going to say for a, a convex or a knife, but I mean it's for an axe as well. Um, that doesn't seem to be the solution that I would necessarily go for because of the convex nature of, of the grind. And because, let's face it, the angle is much, much more a function of feel than of actual measurement on, on an axe like this. You know, like you sharpen it so it feels right. Um, <clears throat> I used to use like a, a great big Sharpie and all that stuff. And I, like I still do on, a, on certain axes, but because this one is so old uh, and the grind is so kinda cockeyed anyway, like I'm really using feel for this much, much more than ouch. Okay. Didn't go all the way through the skin, but it's definitely a sharp edge. Maybe I'll kick it up to the 2000 now just for polishing. I'm the luckiest guy in town. I didn't go through the skin, but I did cut myself on the ax. So, now I'm gonna go up to 2000. Just to polish it up. Now, I know that a really glossy axe bit looks fabulous, but that's not why I do it. The reason I gloss it up as much as I can is because I feel, and I've mentioned this before, and I know that not everyone agrees with me, but I feel that a really glossy axe bit gives rust way less of, a, of an opportunity to get purchased than is one where there are a lot of, ow. Ooh, that thing's got teeth. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, kids. <laughs> uh, where was I? Yeah, I feel that um, there's much less opportunity for rust to, to find a place to grow when there aren't any nooks and crannies on the, on the surface of the ax. Now, because I've left some of the original pitting in this head, I'm already kind of dealing with that kind of possibility, but I'm going to keep it well oiled, you know, which reminds me, I have to do another coat on this handle. And I'm going to hope for the best. 
In fact, I already had to do another re-sanding of the whole head because uh, there was a party here yesterday, as you might be able to tell. <laughs> Uh, my daughter had her sixth birthday party yesterday, and as part of that party, there was a large water balloon fight. Here's the thing. The tap, the tap for the hose is on the inside of my garage. So when we're using the hose, the garage has to be open. This axe was standing on my workbench next to the open door. I was turning on the the hose so that they could fill the water balloons and I turn it off when that batch of water balloons is done and another batch I turn it on again and suddenly like 12 people threw water balloons at me and gooshed the entire inside of the garage including this axe but I we were at a party so I didn't think of that so when I went to pick it I should have turned the uh, airplane mode on so I don't know where we were um, I think I was talking about, okay, whatever. I got my 2000 on here. I'm gonna just gloss up this uh, this bit. And then, what do you think? Oil it up, consider it done. Could this be the last episode of the Axe Restore series? Could it be? Could it be? From three episodes to what are we at? Five, six? <laughs> Let's do it. Now, there is another thing that I forgot to mention. Um, I don't know how many of you guys watch my other channel, my vlog, at uh, the, uh, the URL will be right there. Um, not many, because I've only got like 78 subs. It's not a very old channel yet, <clears throat> but I just sort of do a you know everyday vlog. It's not very bushcrafty, so I'm not expecting you guys to rush over on mass um, but one thing I did say in my latest vlog episode over there is that I'm not gonna get my coveted Canon 80D anytime soon this year is just not gonna happen you guys know exactly why so I've decided to stop treating my iPhone as a stopgap measure and start thinking of it as my actual vlogging camera my YouTube camera so, with an eye towards upping the quality, I have decided to stop using Apple's inbuilt camera app. Uh, I, I bought a copy of, well, I have a copy of Filmic Pro, but I paid the upcharge for the cinematographer's pack. Um, and I got off of Amazon some very affordable iPhone clip-on lenses. And I've got a plan in place to increase, to improve my sound. And where that affects you guys is, I don't want to use any of these good things for this channel until this series is finished. Because I don't want this episode to look and sound really different to the rest of them. So today, I'm just using my straight up iPhone to be in keeping with the other, with the other <laughs> episodes of this epic series. But now that it's going to be over, expect to see a real improvement in my sound and my visuals. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should we take a look? Okay, now we're at the stropping phase. And here's the thing, I'm, I have two straps, and I have two thoughts on stropping. And it's just, I have two thoughts just because I have not yet figured out which thought is the best. This is my Lee Valley drop. Now, once again, this is not a paid endorsement for Lee Valley, but I do love me some Lee Valley goodness, okay? I, I, I spend a lot of money there. I find that their customer service is second to none. Their product choice is a mixed bag of fabulous and kind of crappy, but it definitely is mostly on the fabulous side, including some stuff like, that's the company that makes Veritas tools, right? That's the parent company of Veritas. Most of what they have is very, very good. So this is two smooth sides of leather. Okay, one I've put some green compound on, and over time it's gotten really used. On the other side, it's still naked, but I've used it as well on occasion. Um, and just because it's in my toolbox and everything, it's starting to look a little beat up, but that's okay, it still works. 
So that's the one I use for, you know, axes, bushcraft knives, and stuff like that. And here is the strap that I use for my razor, my straight razor. Okay, and on this one, I use the rough side. I've been putting all the schmutz, the green stuff on the, on the rough side. And I kind of feel that I get a better job done off of the rough side. Even though I, I don't know if you're supposed to use the rough side or the smooth. Like even on these, like this one is sold and the guy said, you know, you can use both sides and everything, but I don't know which ultimately gives me, gives me a better job. I know that um, everything is better with green compound on it, but I'd like to throw that out to you guys. You guys who, who strap, which is probably most of you, do you find using the rough side of leather or the smooth side gives you a better job? And is there any use to to a um, uncompounded leather um, piece? Or should I just use a different kind of compound on that side? I mean, I'm asking this because I started stropping on, on a straight razor. So, and it's a very specific technique on a straight razor, right? Um, in fact, it's better if you have a paddle um, strop, but this is the one I, this is my original strop. Right? I tie this to one side, I pull it taut, and then pretend this is taut, and then I take my razor and... And with a razor, you're supposed to put no downward pressure on it, no weight on it at all. The razor is its own weight, you rest it on the spine, and they're designed that the, the spine to, the, to, the, to the, the very edge of the bit, the blade, is the right angle. And so when I started stropping things like axes and bushcraft knives, it's never working and I realize it's because it's a you need a different technique I watched you know um, <clears throat> Wrangler star he pushes pretty hard he does 50 you know 50 strokes I've noticed many many different stropping techniques um, have been touted in this bushcrafty world of ours but I you know so I try different things but I'm still at the trying different things stage so I would love it if you guys would let me know what you've discovered works best for you. Because I'm, I'm open to changing my stropping technique. I know that I don't have the best. I'm not the worst, but um, I do. I'm Look, I'm always trying to improve everything I do, you know? Which is why that right there bugs me. I have been told that I'm being way too hard about it, but oh, bugs me. Anyways, so I'm gonna strop, and we'll uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, that's 50 strokes on one side. Now it's gonna be 50 on the other. So that's 50 and 50. So what do you guys think? Now one conversation I've had a lot over the years is what kind of oil do you use for your ax heads? There's a lot of philosophies out there about this and all of them are legit in some way or another here's what I think about it I use only mineral oil I used to use you know like some guys are all about gun oil some guys are all about you know beeswax and some guys are all about WD-40 that one I'm not so sure about but hey whatever it's not my axe right um, I use exclusively food grade mineral oil on axes, knives, everything. Because, sorry, I'm, as I'm putting this down, it's probably bouncing the camera. Sorry about that. Um, the reason I only use food grade mineral oil is because even though this axe is not destined to be a spoon carver, even if I'm in the woods, I don't know when I may have to carve something for food prep. And so I don't want my axe to be covered in gun oil or something toxic. I, I don't know the toxicity of gun oil, but mineral oil is meant to go in your body 
So that's what I use. There are several different ways you can get mineral oil. You go to the pharmacy, it's essentially a laxative. Or you go to Amazon and get something specialized. I don't think you had to go for this. When I bought this, I didn't really know if there were several different kinds of mineral oil to choose from. This is, however, good stuff. It's sort of supposed to be a wood conditioner, but for wood, I always use boiled linseed oil. Here's a life hack for you guys. When I'm oiling up an ax or something, I always sort of go into the kitchen and see which knives need a little oil treatment because I have a lot of carbon steel kitchen knives. Um, Here's one from KFU Knives, which is very nice. I put a little too much oil, but it's because I'm gonna let it sit for 10 minutes and then I'm gonna wipe off the excess. And here's one that I, I don't know if the blade needs to be oiled or not, but um, the wood definitely needs it. This knife is a Bulat, which is a, like a, they were, it was kickstarted, okay? <clears throat> this knife is a Bulat, which is a company in Toronto, I think. And this knife was part of a Kickstarter campaign. And I assume that one of you guys sent it to me, because I did not Kickstarter it. So Damascus steel. Wait, let me see if I can get into light. See Damascus. This is an olive wood handle. So whoever ordered this knows me, because I have not been secretive about the fact that I want a olive wood handled Woodlore clone by Mr. Sandy Jack. I would love an olive wood handled jack lore with black spacers, mosaic pins, and if I'm feeling hoity toity, a tapered tang. Man, that is what I dream of. I've mentioned that on my channel, and since this knife just sort of appeared, it was obviously ordered by someone who knows me well. But that's neither here nor there. It's just a little knife hack. If you got the oil out, why not oil everything that needs it? So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go look for all my axes and oil them all up. I think, but this series is done now. This axe is done. All I gotta do is keep oiling the the hell of up, you know, every week or so. But there's nothing else to show you guys. We made it to the end. It took way more episodes than I thought, but we made it. We're at the end. Boya! <laughs> um, so, I guess that's it. As I always say, if you like what I'm doing here, then please comment down below, share my videos, subscribe, hit that little bell, and leave me a smiley thumb. If you don't like what I'm doing, leave me a frowny thumb. Thanks for watching, guys.